Seven Democrats and four Republicans are running for their party's nomination for governor in Maine in the primary Tuesday. And as of this evening, we will have interviewed every one of them here on 207. With us tonight is Republican Ken Fredette. Mr. Fredette is a lawyer who lives in Newport. He is the minority leader in the Maine House of Representatives. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Amanda. Let's talk about something that's uh, very timely in the news. You yes. have fought unwaveringly against the expansion of Medicaid in Maine. Yes. A judge this week ruled that the LePage administration must come up with a plan by Monday to expand Medicaid and comply with the law. So what should the state be doing right now to carry out that judge's order? Well, I think, first of all, we have to recognize that, quite frankly, I believe that the governor may, in fact, appeal that decision to the law court, and so we may have to find out at a later date what happens. But look, I think the governor at some point in time needs to file the plan as required by uh, the referendum that passed. And, you know, but the legislature sort of needs to look at this, and I think at the end of the day, amend what was passed by referendum and, and really design something that I think that can be sustainable in the long term. Well, specifically, but as briefly as you can, what would that be? Well, I think, for example, you know, I think you don't want to look at bringing 80,000 people onto the Medicaid rolls. That puts us up at about 350,000. I think you can look at those people that are 100% below poverty, fund those people, and then maybe find a way uh, to subsidize other ways to get people on the exchange. You believe tax cuts are an effective way to boost the economy. When you go home to Washington County where you grew up and you talk to these businesses, do they agree with you that tax cuts are the way to reinvigorate the economy? Well, no, I think it's, it's really different. I mean, when you talk about York and Cumberland County that has 60% of the economic activity in this state, it's very different than, than rural Maine where I grew up. Look, I, I've had the privilege of being involved in a historic time when we had a very bad economy in the state to today where we have nearly full employment. Even in Washington County, there are help wanted signs today, not foreclosure signs. But I think rural Maine has a special challenge. That's why one of the reasons why I'm running for governor. I grew up there, I've been there. I think more needs to be done in rural Maine to help it grow. You believe in smaller government. What specifically would you look at cutting? Well, I think you have to look at the Department of Education. I think you need to look at the Department of Health and Human Services. I think it's about efficiency. And, and, and many businesses are achieving efficiency by really using you know, technology. I mean, there, there are ways to, to implement technology, but I think it's about making strategic investments. Like, for example, last year uh, when I helped do the strategic investment for the new uh, engineering building at the University of Maine. Well, the fact is that uh, human services and education account for roughly 70, 75 cents out of every dollar. Yeah. And people like those programs. They are reluctant to cut them. Constituents are reluctant to see them cut. So how do you go after them if that's where you think cuts can be made? Well, I, I think that there, if you actually saw any of the polling, most of the folks are saying, look, we do want to see some of these welfare programs specifically reformed, not do away with them and not do away um, with services that those that most need them. And so I think that's the balance that we're really trying to find here. How do we reform programs, keep people having the incentive to go out and work, uh, take increases in jobs so that they're, they're doing what's good for their family and good for the main economy. Any governor in the U.S. these days has to live with the terrible reality that at any time there could be a mass school shooting. What steps would you take as governor to try to prevent one from happening here? Well, you know, I've spent about the last 20 years in the, in the military here in the Maine Air National Guard. And I think one of the things you have to be doing, one of the things that we do in the military is to always do drills, always be prepared with your county officials, your local officials, your state officials, and maybe even the National Guard, so that if there is an incident, you know, you've had an opportunity to practice and train what the response is gonna be to that. And specifically, I think at the same time, we need to look at having uh, resource officers in the local schools so that they can also have the ability to respond. What can be done not to respond to these incidents, but to keep them from happening in the first place? Well, I think you need to lock down and you need to harden schools. I mean, you shouldn't be able to just walk into a school um, at any point in time that you want to and just walk in the door. I think you need to have security systems set up so that people have to have certain requirements in order to come in through the door. Would you support any measure that is even close to some type of gun control? I, I don't think this is a gun control issue. I think this is a, first and foremost, nobody should go to school uh, being scared about a gun issue, no parent, no teacher, no child. So I think we, we have to, again, harden the schools. Uh, but I think we have responsible gun owners in the state of Maine. We have a proud history of that. I don't think we need to touch that issue. All right, let's talk about the U.S. Supreme Court issued a ruling recently that legalized sports gambling. Do you support legalized sports gambling in Maine? Well, look, I, I think it's something that's worth having the conversation about. My guess is that we may even see this looked at at the national level from the Congress maybe addressing it. Uh, but it is going to be part of an economy. You know, I think we've seen over time 
uh, it, it takes time for things to eventually get to me. I suspect we're gonna see that happen to me. It's a question of when. You wouldn't try to block it as governor. No, and I think it's maybe even one of those questions where you might even want to send that out to referendum. So let, let the people decide on that, much like they did the casinos. All right. Ken Fredette, Republican candidate for governor. Thank you for being with us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you, Rob, and thank you, Amanda. And we will be right back.